Good morning and welcome. My name's Linda and I'm your Trauma Recovery Coach. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Hit me up down below in the comments where you're from. We're from all over the room, over the room. Yeah, we're all over the room and all over the world today. And if you're here for the replay, hit me up with hashtag replay. And as always, any questions, just leave them down below and I will return with an answer. Today I want to talk to you about shrinking the inner critic. One of the hardest um, challenges we face is shrinking the inner critic, especially when we come from trauma uh, in our childhood because that's all we have known what to do is criticise ourselves. Uh, in order, we believe as a child, because we don't know any better, in order that we can feel safe. It keeps us on, if I'm aware uh, of what I should or shouldn't do, then I'm going to be safe and Certainly for me, it was perhaps I won't be the subject of abuse or my family won't be the subject of abuse. Okay, so with today's list, let's begin. Now, this all comes from Pete's book, okay? Now, I do the videos because one of the things that happens with complex PTSD is that we become more visual about me, we become, we become more visual and oftentimes listening to the videos over and over helps people be, take it on, get the information inside, absorb it, okay? Now, Pete is one of the foremost people in this area, especially with all the practical information. Okay, so one of the things we need to become aware of or develop an awareness of within ourselves is perfectionism. And in order to combat it, we have to learn to tell ourselves, I do not have to be perfect to be safe or loved in the present. Now think about it, how overwhelming the trauma is. And I know for me, the message that I got from a very young age was be perfect and maybe I'll be safe. All right. So we, as an adult, we combat that by becoming aware of when we're triggered looking at whether I'm believing I have to be perfect in this moment for everything to be okay, all right? And also perfectionism can build into us a space of I can't let anyone in because if I do, they'll see how damaged I am or they'll see that I'm not perfect really is the simplest explanation. And the other one too is perfectionism makes us build walls, all right, because we just walk through life feeling unsafe. We don't need to be like that as adults. We are reclaiming who I am and reclaiming our power that we're safe as adults. And we have to be the ones that retrain our brain that we're safe. So we do it through the small things in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, all or none and black and white thinking. And I can tell you for a fact, I was so, I so lived in black and white thinking. I really did. It was either black or white. There was no in-between. And what it does for us is it doesn't let life in, okay? It makes it hard for us to comprehend that we're safe if we let somebody else's opinion float around outside of us. We don't have to take that opinion in and on board. And this is, this is actually a really central part to codependence is that we keep going black or white so if it's black, then, you know, one side of it is we don't let anyone in. And then white is, well, we let everyone and everything in. And then we end up trying to be everything to everyone, how they like people. And that doesn't work for us either. It's overwhelming and anxiety producing for us. Okay. So what we need to do is build that awareness into I reject extreme or overgeneralized descriptions, judgments or criticisms but you're allowed to have your own opinions. You're allowed to have what you're working with at the moment and it's allowed to be flexible as well, all right? So, you know, in the past as I've gone through a growth stage, people say, oh, yeah, but you used to be like that. Well, I did, but I'm continually growing and learning and now I have a greater understanding of who I am and where I'm going. So, yeah, I was once like that and that that's we need to feel okay with that. Don't worry about anyone else because we see that we are becoming more well by pursuing our path, okay? 
one day at a time. Self-hate, self-disgust and toxic shame. Now, I used to think, I don't have shame, all right? I don't feel ashamed of who I am. But the problem is it, it goes right down to our spirit in order to try and keep us safe, okay? So in order to feel how toxic shame has impacted us, we need to build an awareness in to ourselves right down to our spirit, okay? So I commit to myself. I am on my side. I am a good enough person. And you'll find that when you begin to recognize the perfectionism as well, you realize that I am good enough. So today is a prime example of this. For me, uh, I've gone to gym, I've done dishes, I've had a shower, but because I, the adult, is pushing and pushing to go forward, um, my whole brain system starts with the perspiration and the anxiety. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see now, but I'm dripping, not just from having a shower, but because my whole physical system's going, you know, go and hide, go and hide, go and hide. You're not perfect. You're not composed. Well, look, it's just not going to happen. We don't get composed and then live life. We live life and our body and our brain get used to the fact that I'm sitting here and I'm talking and we're safe, okay? Uh, the shame will come up and out. It's toxic. It comes up and out. We drink water. We get rid of it. We release emotions and we get rid of it. And it's a whole process. Uh, for me, uh, when I used to go out in public, I'd just be drenched in perspiration from the anxiety. I wouldn't talk when I went to a new place and in public because my brain like has to do this mud map to feel safe. All right. And that's part of uh, rehealing or healing, rehealing. Anyhow, rewiring our brain that we're safe in a public place. Okay. So now that I've done it so often on Saturday night, I was able to go out, be in a crowd, a small crowd, be with friends, and I didn't, my, my system didn't panic. Okay. But now coming on here live because I'm rushing and because I'm not putting everything in order in our brain. Okay. That's what happens. Our brain wants to have everything in an order, like held on to like this. It's like, you're not safe. You're not safe. It triggers. But I know as an adult that I'm securing me. So we keep going forward and the body will do what the body's going to do. But I'm okay. So micromanagement, worrying, obsessing, looping, over futurizing. And look, I've done a, I'm going to do a thing on uh, a, one of these on uh, over futurizing as well because that kept me crippled for a long time. So we need to be able to affirm that I will not repetitively examine details over and over. I will not jump to negative conclusions. I will not endlessly second guess myself. And I think for me, second guessing was something that kept me crippled in the anxiety. Uh, and you'll find that every time you want to go and do something, you start second guessing yourself. Hi, Joey. Do I ever get night sweats because of anxiety and fear? Yes, I used to. Absolutely, I used to. I'd be lying in bed. Uh, it could happen if I'd gone to bed and I was rushed. But predominantly for me, what I found happening is that I'd wake up 15 to 20 minutes after I fell asleep. So you know how it takes forever to get to sleep. And then I'd wake up 15 to 20 minutes later and I'd be sweating, perspiring perspiring and not breathing properly and I realized and look it took me years to understand this that I was actually waking up in the middle of a panic attack how I combated that was going to bed every night and making myself do the breathing five seconds in five seconds out for one minute so six breaths in and out and then what I had to do progressively is feel that breath going in and out, but relaxing my body. And then when I couldn't feel my body, I'd have to put weights on it, not heavy, but just enough for me to be aware and present in my body. Now, what happens is our body goes, oh, you're doing, our brain goes, you're doing something different and it wants to panic. But we as the adult take charge and say, okay, 
I'm in my safe space. So do the, you know, five, four, three, two, one, look around, something you can see, touch, etc., etc. See, do I say so? Anyhow, because we want to keep doing this because we want to be the ones that know that we're safe as the adult, okay? And you are safe. We're in bed and we're safe, all right? So look at each one of those four things, five things. Is it four or five? One, two, three, four, five things. And just pick one. You can recognize when you're looping because someone will suggest something to you and you can't get off track about what you're thinking. You can't take on new information. So looping, give yourself time to sit down and say, well, I'm looping. I need to sit down and I've got to breathe and I've got to do mindfulness techniques to come into this present because I actually want to move forward. And for you, Joe, remember we talked about yesterday about doing the exercises, just sitting down and doing the armchair. Our brain will loop and say things like, especially when in a critic, our brain will go, what for? This is useless. This won't work. Um... Just think of what you thought of yesterday and you'll realise that your brain was looping and we had to do a direct cut through, right, just do it, okay? So you'll you'll notice that a lot. And that's the inner critic that we developed over a lifetime of wanting to be safe. Okay, next thing we can look at, unfair, devaluing comparisons to others or to one's most perfect moments. <laughs> Okay, hands up, everybody. Who does this? <laughs> and look, I would say to myself, oh, for goodness sake, why can't you get up today and just go and do that? You did it yesterday. And look, now where I'm at, I still say, oh, for goodness sake, why can't you get up and go to gym today? You did it yesterday. We don't need to treat ourselves like this. Okay? And we catch it. We want to catch those thoughts and we want to say, hey, I'm going to gym today or I'm going to sit in my chair and exercise or... I'm just going to do my dishes today and it's going to be good enough. All right? Sit down in a critic. Come on, cheer squad, let's go. Sorry, you can't see me. I'm doing, come on, cheer squad, let's go and let's do this. In a critic will go, blah, blah, blah. You go, no, come on, let's go, let's do this. And you are your own biggest cheer squad. All right? So you want to say, I refuse to compare myself unfavorably, unfavorably to others. I will not compare my insides to their outsides and remember oh my goodness people are really good at wearing masks i mean we've done it for years why would other people be good at doing it uh it, it's taken everything for me to get out there and go yeah this is me but it's good it's good that we can take away the masks and go i don't have to be perfect today i need to just get up and do what i can and one of the most basic things that can happen for us it's like I've been wanting to do my washing since Friday, but keep putting it off for one reason or another. But now I need to go, okay, I'm either looping or micromanaging or worrying or obsessing or I'm comparing myself to what I used to do. And sometimes I do that to myself, you know, why aren't you doing it? You could have done it by now. But sometimes we're just working through stuff. And it's going to take a few days to get done. Fortunately, I have lots of gym clothes. <laughs> um, that's one of my things, I think. Anyhow, so we don't want to compare ourselves to what we see out there. We want to say, hey, where was I a week ago? Am I still in the same program? Or have I managed to move forward from where I was? And for me, I only have to look back to where I was last year and know that I've moved ahead. Okay, and that's what we want. We don't want perfectionism overnight because as we go through our journey, we unpack and are able to see our next step forward as well, so the next open door for us. And we only have to go through one door at a time. And in group, we're our biggest cheer squad, as we know. Let's do this, all right? We don't want fear to run our lives. No way. Guilt. Feeling guilty does not mean I am guilty. And I want you to be really, really aware of this distinction here. Guilt is something that will come from our childhood trauma 
Absolutely. It's well known and written about. Look, you could Google it anywhere. But we have to make a distinction between just because I feel guilty doesn't mean I am. And we need to be the ones that sit down and go, look, I'm really, really guilty about this, but is it the truth? And my kids have been really good for me in this area because we have open communication and they'll say, but mum, it's not your fault. So anything that happens in our lives, I'm just trying to think of something quick. Um, oh, it's hard. <laughs> Three kids, which... So something happens in their life, okay? Could be anything. And then I say, oh, I'm so sorry that's happened. You know, I feel really bad about that. You know, I'm blaming myself for what's happened in their adult life. And they say, Mum, it's not your fault. And I have to sit back and go... Oh, yeah, they're adults, you know. And it's the same for us when we look at what happened to us. It's like, oh, yeah, it's not my fault. I didn't make those choices, okay, that adults made. I didn't make those choices. I don't need to feel this guilt. Unfortunately, guilt can be like automatic pilot. It just switches on. But as we work through our inner workings, it does get better and better. I can promise you that. Okay, overproductivity, workaholism, busyholism, definitely guilty. My son who lives with me now is like, Mum, just slow down. And I am learning to slow down. And I've got to tell you, it is a learning process to teach ourselves to just slow down. Part of it is that we live with a feeling that we have to have everything in our external world under control to feel safe. So we learn to slow down. Um, the think of it this way. How often are you running into things? How often... Look, I, I, run a, I used to run around perpetually with uh, bruises on my shins because I'd always be bashing into something or another or I'd have bruises up my arms because I was always hitting something. And that's because we're not present in this moment and we have uh, no peripheral vision happening out there at all. So we need to build slowing down into us, becoming conscious of when we're trying to do too much, okay? Something that I will probably work on for the rest of my life, if I'm honest, um, but I'll get there. Harsh judgments of self and others slash name calling, calling harsh judgments of others again it comes down to wanting to be safe so we catch ourselves if we are doing that it's not i found personally it's not something that i do very often but i definitely used to do it and when i do it now i pull myself up before the words come out of my mouth because i don't know their path or where they're walking and if the words come out of my mouth now I sit back and I take a good look at what I need to understand in my life all right so it is all part of self-compassion as well if I'm being hard on somebody else you can guarantee that I'm probably being just as hard on myself all right that's a lot of information to take in today so just choose the one thing that popped out for you take notes Take the notes to your therapist or trauma coach, all right, because you want to work through and gain personalised strategies for you, okay? What that means in your life and how you want to go about working through that in order that you can have the change that's necessary to free yourself up even more. Thanks for joining in today. It's been wonderful to have you with me. Remember hit me up down below any questions and also if you want to come and join group let me know because it's a free group and we are each other's greatest cheese squad <laughs> bye for now